evacuation. More than 100,000 men, women, and children, all of Japanese ancestry, removed from their homes in the Pacific Coast state to wartime communities established in out-of-the-way places. Two-thirds of the evacuees are American citizens by right of birth. The rest are their Japanese-born parents and grandparents. On Pearl Harbor Day, December 7, 1941, a bunch of us guys were out at Peninsula Park playing basketball. But as soon as we heard the news that Japan had attacked Pearl Harbor, we all looked at each other and said, we better get the hell home. Get off of the streets, because obviously there's going to be trouble. At the time, we didn't know how serious it was going to be, that we would have to, in fact, leave town, that the United States government would take us away and put us behind barbed wire fences. Notices were posted. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. They took the community leaders first, and, and the families were left without their husbands. Yeah, right fathers. after December 7th, the FBI had the names of addresses of all the people of Japanese ancestry living on the West Coast. And the FBI went to the private homes of all the Japanese leaders of the community and arrested them. We didn't know what to do. Our leaders were in jail. Ultimately, of course, we found out we had to report to the Portland Assembly Center and from there to the Minidoka internment camp. Now they were taken to racetracks and fairgrounds where the Army almost overnight had built assembly centers. They lived here until new pioneer communities could be completed on federally owned lands in the interior. While we had pulled up to the main gate, I saw some of my buddies inside, so I went in and uh, socialized with them. And then came time I decided I better go out and help my parents bring the, bring the baggage in. So I walked back to the main gate, and the soldier said, where are you going? He says, I want to go out and help my parents with the baggage. And he says, you can't leave. You got to stay inside the fence. The worst part of it was when you realized that your freedoms were gone. You were no longer your master of your, of your life. While they have many things in common with ordinary American communities, in the really important things, relocation centers are not normal and probably never can be. Home life is disrupted. Eating, living, and working conditions are abnormal. Training of children is difficult. Americanism, taught in the schools and churches and on the playgrounds, loses much of its meaning in the confines of a relocation center. Living was complicated. We had no running water in each apartment. Whenever the, we had a dust storm, the dust would seep into your barrack or your, your room and cover everything. Well, life was uh, dirty and uh, very, very uncomfortable. Medical facilities were definitely lacking. My middle brother, my playmate when we were kids, he died, died of meningitis. His last months were pretty miserable. We knew that he was gonna die. We knew that the medical facilities were not doing anything for him for the last few weeks of his life. Oh, sad to say, we just waited for him to die. The War Relocation Authority has been more concerned with permanent relocation. Getting the evacuees out of the backwaters of the relocation centers into the mainstream of American life. So their labor can help to win the war. So the cost of the taxpayers may be reduced so there can be no question of the constitutionality of any part of the action taken by the government to meet the dangers of war. So no law-abiding American need to fear for his own freedom. Only those evacuees whose statements and whose acts leave no question of their loyalty to the United States are permitted to leave. The violence that we exp experienced early on in the, in, uh, after Pearl Harbor was 
not based on harming people. It was based on sequestering people, put them out of the way. And that's what the United States government did. People will need to know that that was a horrific experience. And uh, we don't want that to happen to anybody. Because we've been down that road before. <laughs>